everybody. Thanks for tuning in to our online Thrive tonight. We're excited that you're here with us. And right now we have something called Tribal Wars going in full swing. And what that is, is each small group within our student ministry is battling it out. Different ways that you get points for that. Uh, first way actually is participating in tonight's theme. And that is graphic tees and jean jackets. So if you got a graphic tee, you can wear it. If you got a jean jacket, you can wear it, you can wear one, you can wear the other, you can get more points if you wear both. So participate in that. When you hop on your Zoom after this, wear those. And then you also get points by having your Bible and journal on the Zoom call with you. Take some notes during this message and send them to your tribe leader and they'll make sure you get credit for that as well. And then last part, you'll notice in the video description there is a link for a devotional that many of us are going through as a student ministry. It's called Overflow. It's really awesome. You can hop in on there. If you participate in that Devo, then you get credit as well and some points there. It's a great, great Devo, and it's an awesome thing to add into the Devos that you already do. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying it as we're working through it and learning so much, and so just wanted to put those out there in front of you. Well, tonight we continue in our series called Binge This, not that. And what this is, is it's looking at retro TV shows, right? Retro's popular right now. And it's finding scriptural inspiration based off of those titles in there. And so thinking of that, you know, last week we talked about home improvement. What does it look like inside of our house? How can we make that better? You know, and this week we want to talk about a show from the mid 90s called Boy Meets World. And if you haven't heard of it, check out this video, which was the intro for the show right now. so funny to look back at some of these TV shows and to, to notice how all this fashion's coming back in again. And I remember when the show first came out, it was one that we would watch in my house. And just give you an idea of what Boy Meets World even is, is it was a show that came out in the mid-1990s. It actually first aired in 1993, and it ran until 2000. It had a few different spinoffs here and there of the characters and themes and stuff like that. But the premise of it was this main character named Corey Matthews, and it was him in sixth grade in the first episode just learning how to navigate life and friendship and the different things that come up with it, hence the title Boy Meets World, right? He's trying to figure out his relation with this world. It's dealing with adolescence and the issues that were faced as he was going through culture and the different things at that time. Now, Boy Meets World had 158 episodes over seven seasons, and it was wildly popular. And so it's one of those shows that anybody who's probably about my age remembers watching Boy Meets World or knowing of people who watch it as a popular thing to talk about at school. And so tonight, thinking of that idea of Boy Meets World, I want to talk about a believer's interaction with our world and our culture. Now, at some point, every person who follows Jesus is going to come in contact with culture that's opposite of Christ. They're going to come into contact of that because we understand that the world standards aren't the same as what Scripture lays out for followers of Jesus. So what do we do when believer meets world? What do we do when those things come together? How should we view that? What does that look like? So we just want to unpack a few verses tonight and encourage you as a follower of Christ, as you seek him in this world, that sometimes we feel that pressure and we can really feel upside down. And so let's pray. Lord, we thank you for being able to come together tonight to hear your word. And God, we thank you that it is so relevant, it is so active in our lives. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you will speak to each of us as we dive into this. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Romans chapter 12. 
Romans 12 and the first and second verses of that passage. If you forgot to grab your Bible in the beginning of this or your notebook, hit pause, go get those so you have it for this. That way you don't miss anything. But Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. This is a passage of scripture that really encouraged me early on in my, my growth with Jesus and as I was interacting with people who weren't Christians, those who had yet to know him and different standards they had. You know, this was a reminder of my responsibility as a follower and how I should be interacting with them. In Romans 12, verses 1 through 2, it says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, the reason this encouraged me so much was that it gives us insight into a believer's relationship to worldly culture, the, the culture that's around us. And it tells us to live our lives as a form of worship to Jesus and not to conform to those worldly patterns. And oftentimes it's really easy to look at following Jesus as mostly a list of things we can't do. And that do not conform in there that we see in that passage in our minds begins to equate with, well, I can't do these things. Don't conform means don't do. You know, so we think of it that way. And I just want to challenge you that if we're thinking of it that way, then that's us focusing on the wrong end of it, the wrong things. Instead, think of it like this. You know, I, I try to tell people to think of it as guardrails. You know, when you're driving down the road, there's different markers, there's different indicators different signs that are there to not only keep you heading the right way, but to do it safely. They want you to get to your destination in the safest way possible. They want to make sure that you get through that and don't get hurt on the way. And now some roads, as you're traveling, you'll notice have guardrails. And those guardrails are there because there's a greater danger there if you were to go off the road. You know, there's a sharp curve and it drops off a bunch. And in the ice, if you slid and went off that embankment, the guardrail would stop you. And you can view those guardrails, those guidances on the road as something that's there to help you and to keep you headed the right way. Or you can view those guardrails as, this is ridiculous. This is restrictive. This is wrong. You know, I should be able to do whatever I want. Like, who are they to say this? Well, you can do that. You can go around those guardrails if you choose. But you have to remember, yes, you're free to choose, but you are not free from the consequences. So if you choose to go off-road and around them guardrails, that is your choice, but you're not free from the consequences. The same is true with Jesus. We're free to choose, but we're not free from the consequences that come from our choices in terms of sin. You know, we can view his standards as there to guide and help us and protect us towards our best intended future, and that's why he has them. Or you can disregard them and go around them, but once again, you're free to choose, but you're not free from those consequences. We know that as we go through life. And this is a follower's interaction with the world. We see these guardrails of God's standards, and we see what the world says. And the two many times are at odds, because we know the wisdom of this world is not the same as the wisdom of God. He knows the best intended things for our future. And, and when we say that word world, and we're talking about worldly culture, worldly standards, we're talking about culture that is not of God, culture that is set up against it, culture that is what our society in general is saying, this is okay, this is what you should be doing, this is what you should be taking part in. And then we have God's culture, the kingdom culture, that tells us the standard of truth, of the standard of what it means to follow him and our best way to get towards those plans that he has for us. You know, those heavenly standards are there to guide us and to keep us safe. That's God's intention for our lives. He's put those there to protect us. You know, and Think of it like this. When a son or a daughter meets that worldly culture, we should be something different. As sons and daughters of the Most High King, when we interact with that world, we should be something different. You know, and last week we, we touched a bit on that, of being set apart, or in other words, holy. And so tonight, as we talk about that a little bit deeper, it's looking through life where, you know, we're navigating, we're figuring out what it looks like to honor God. And that means at times we're set apart and we look different than the worldly culture, the non-God honoring culture around us. Ephesians actually has a really good reference to this in there. In chapter 5, verses 1 through 2, and I'm out of the New Living Translation here, it says to imitate God 
therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us and a pleasing aroma to God. And that goes on to give us some outlines in there in verses 3 through 7 of what that looks like a little more in detail. So take some time tonight and read that as well. But I love that, that, that idea of imitating Christ as followers of him, to be imitators of him. Think about it. Have you ever seen, maybe it's an old home video of you when you were a child and you were imitating one of your parents. Or if you've been in public and you see a little kid who's mimicking the things that dad or mom is doing, you know, as a parent, you think about that, you know, they're putting on their shoes and they're trying to walk and, you know, it looks silly and cute and all this. But think of that from the terms of a Christ follower. Think of the joy that our Heavenly Father would have knowing that his kids are working at being more like him, trying to emulate him, trying to be that, you know, and, and that's what we see in that illustration in family structures when a kid is trying to be like their parent. They're looking up to that example of them. They're learning from them. And that's what us as followers of Jesus need to be doing with God the Father, looking to his example, looking to the Holy Scripture of who Jesus is and the example he laid for us in those. And when we imitate somebody. It means we're taking on the actions and the attitudes and, and the mindset of that. So when we are imitators of God, imitators of Jesus, we're taking on those actions, attitudes, and mindsets. We're taking that on ourselves. We're applying it to our life, to our relationship with culture around us. Now, right now, our society's current relationship to culture has its largest impact in terms of media use. It's always been a high percentage of how we relate to culture through that and how we get what culture says, but it's even more elevated right now with us being at home. You know, when you think of TV shows, movies, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, you know, you're, you're looking at Spotify playlists and YouTube, all these different platforms of media and entertainment most of which has this worldly connotation attached to it. Those are the things that are coming in. And, and these platforms can offer some good things, but they can also offer us a lot of garbage. And so knowing how a believer relates with culture, we need to be careful in that. And so I want to talk a bit about that tonight. You know, I came across a recent study that showed the average American home before quarantine, before pandemic, was watching an average of 57 hours a week of TV. Think of it, 57 hours. That's more than you guys work jobs if you got a full-time job. That's crazy. 57 hours. I don't even know how that happens. I really don't. Because uh, that means like from the moment you get home, you'd be watching TV until the moment you go to bed. And then probably some in your sleep too. So, you know, it's just like, what is happening? Now that we're on quarantine, that 57 hours isn't current. Average American home is watching 66 hours a week of TV. They're seeing an eight to nine hour a week increase, a whole nother workday increase in the media that's being consumed in the average American home. When you think of that, you know, what kind of content are we allowing into our eyes, into our minds, into our hearts? How is it shaping us? And you may think that it doesn't, but it does. You know, in ministry, we see a lot of different common links and we can tie those in to different things and, and we see a large correlation between media intake, music, TV shows, movies, those kinds of things of what's being taken into and issues that people struggle with. For example, a lot of times when someone struggles with fear, you know, there can be a correlation to violent and stressful movies that they're watching and that's not going to help that at all. Struggling with poor language choices, you know, explicit you know, music and movies isn't aiding in that at all. Even though you're hearing it and you might not be saying it in that moment, those seeds are getting into your brain. You struggle with stress, worry, anxiety, probably have a high consumption of news and that's gonna make it worse. And we see that in this. People wanna be informed of what's going on, but there's a balance to it. You can be informed, but you don't have to be just fully engulfed in it all the time. And you can notice when those feelings are coming up in you. You struggle with a poor self-image. I would wonder what kind of people are you following on Instagram? What kind of things are you watching on YouTube? Because I guarantee there's a correlation to what's contributing to that. Proverbs 4, verse 23 through 27 gives us some wisdom and scriptural insight on this. And it says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything that you do flows from it. 
Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all of your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. And I love that passage, the, the content that we let into our ears, the, the stuff that we let our eyes see affects our heart. You know, if we have garbage in, we're going to have garbage out. If we have good in, we're going to have good out. And it all plays a part. You know, the things that we see and hear can either build us up or it can tear us down. And we need to be cautious. We need to be applying that Romans 12, you know, our text verse, that type of life to the things that we're seeing, the things that we're taking, and not conforming to the patterns that this world is offering. You know, think of it like this. Just because something is popular, just because a lot of people are watching it or doing it, doesn't mean that it's right to take part in it. In fact, a lot of times when something's wildly popular, for me, that's a red flag. Okay, if there's a lot of people who don't know Jesus that are like engulfed in this thing, that can be a red flag to me to be cautioned before I choose to take part in that. And before you watch and listen, it's super easy to check things out, to see what's in there. Music and movies, TV shows, all of it. There's some great resources, and we'll put those in the video description below. The first one is Plugged In. Um, plugged In, you'll see it down in the link there. And it gives music, uh, movies, TV show reviews, they have a bunch of Disney Plus stuff on there, and it gives you a full breakdown of all the content that is in there. So you know full well what you're walking into. And if Plugged In doesn't have it, there's a website called Kids In Mind that'll also be in the video description. They have a lot of things that Plugged In doesn't. And if you just search for a little bit, you read, you know exactly what you're coming into when it comes to the content that's in there. And so really, there's very small margin for excuse to be like, well, I didn't know, because we have resources available. We just have to be willing to use them. You know, and also when you, you think of this idea of relating to culture, you know, say you do review it and something was missed, you also have to be willing to walk out of something. You know, even if it's in your own house, it, you know, media has this way of sucking us in and we want to know what happens. We want to, you know, we're connecting with it. We want to know the outcome. But the thing is, is really we should be asking what's most honoring to God in this moment. You know, if something comes up and we've got that, that feeling like, oh, I don't know, we can turn it off. We can walk out. We can leave that scenario and situation because it's not worth what's going to come into our minds from it. You know, that idea, what's most honoring to God? And if you think of it in forms of this mantra, others may, I may not. Basically meaning, just because others are doing it doesn't mean that I have to do it. You know, we're in charge of us, and we're in charge of the things that we see and we interact with and, and we allow in. And so, you know, a few questions here for you to ask yourself in terms of media, in terms of relation to culture that can help you filter should you be taking part in something or not. And the first of those is this. What thoughts is the content that I'm taking part in invoking in me? So what, what is my brain turning? What am I thinking before and after consuming this type of media, this type of music, this type of TV show? Are they things that I want to dwell in? Are they thoughts that I really want in there? Another question to ask yourself is, what do I sense in my spirit? You know, as followers of Jesus, he's given us his Holy Spirit, and that's there to help navigate us through life. And it's there as a checkpoint a lot of times. And I know there's times when I feel that uneasiness in me that's from the Holy Spirit. And I can push that down. Once again, you have the choice. You can push that down or you can listen to it. All right, Lord, are you trying to tell me something here? Maybe this isn't the best for me. You know, maybe this isn't something that's going to trigger thoughts that I need to be meditating on. So what is the content invoking in your mind? And what do you sense in your spirit? And the third one is this. Is it against scriptural principles? Thinking of that as you get into the word and you know God's heart, is this form of media lining up with the principles of scripture or is it against it? You know, we don't want to be taking in things that are setting itself up against the message of God. And so I find when I ask those questions, it really helps me to navigate through something that may have clean reviews, but might not be something that I still want to be able to take part in, you know, because I don't want anything to affect my relationship with the Lord if I have 
any say in it at all. So these three questions can help you navigate that media and even making decisions and what to do and what not to do. And really, it comes down to this bottom line. We want our lives to be honoring to God. We want to live lives in such a way that we're at a higher standard, a higher calling because we're pursuing him. And we want that to be that God standard, not what the ungodly culture says it should be. And so as you're watching this tonight, maybe you're feeling that that sense in your spirit, like, oh man, I've been compromising in some of this, you know, and to encourage you, if you've been making choices that aren't based on God's standard, you know, you've been watching or consuming different types of media that you know isn't what you should be taking part in, I encourage you to make that right with Jesus. It's called repentance. It means that we ask God for forgiveness and then we make a change. We turn from it and go the other way. We choose to then let that go for the sake of Jesus to become more like him. And we know that he's there to help us do that. That's part of the role of the Holy Spirit is the empowerment to live out the life that God has intended for us. Or maybe you're listening and you haven't surrendered your life yet to Jesus. You know, you're hearing of these godly standards, but you're like, I don't even know what they are. Well, if you want to know them, you first must need to know who Jesus is. If you want to know what his standards are, know him first. And he's faithful to show those as we get into his word and as we get to know him more. And you can do that right now. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with him, you can do that now. If you know him, but you've been making compromises, you can make that right. And for not knowing him, that starts with pursuing that relationship. It's admitting that you're a sinner. It's admitting that Jesus is who he says he is and asking him for forgiveness and then choosing to live for him and taking steps towards him. For those who are already in relationship with Jesus, but there's been some compromise made, it's asking for forgiveness and turning from that, trying to make sure that we stay within those guardrails, you know, and asking God to work within our lives, being willing to let go of those things. So as we wrap up, I want to encourage you that Jesus has an amazing plan for your life. Far better, far more wild than anything you could ever ask for, ever dream or imagine. You know, and as you pursue him, he's given you this roadmap for the best journey, the best intended plan that he has for your life. And that roadmap is going to take you on a path that has some guardrails, that has some warning signs, some things that, hey, avoid these to keep heading the right way. So I encourage you as you're navigating through that path, change your thoughts from I can't to I have freedom in Christ so I don't have to. We're not bound in sin anymore. We have a choice to be free from that. We have freedom in Christ and focus on all that he's given you. Focus on that beautiful plan he has. So you've given up a few things that are temporal and don't satisfy and can really harm you for the gain of God's plan for your life and eternal life. Who wouldn't trade that? How amazing is that? So we begin to shift that thinking, not from I, I can't to I can and I want to. And that's the key right there to a believer's interaction with the world. As we wind down, guys, I'm going to pray for you. But then right after that, Zoom calls are going to be firing up. So make sure to hop onto those. And if you can't get on a Zoom for whatever meeting, spend some time with some friends and some family and dialoguing on this. And, you know, open up your word and journal on this as well. And ask the Holy Spirit, okay, what things are in my life that aren't honored to you? And he's faithful to show that. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you that you didn't just come and then just leave us to our own devices. God, that you are active in our lives and you show us that best intended plan and path for us. So Lord, help us to understand what that is. And Lord, highlight things in our lives that are not honoring to you. Lord, help us to correct them. God, we want to be followers of you who are just all in, who are willing, Lord, to give up anything that may trip us up or pull us away from you. And Lord, keep us on that path of seeking you towards our futures. We know you have our best intentions in mind, and we're thankful for that, God. And we thank you that we have freedom in you. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you guys for hanging with us tonight, and we'll see you back next Wednesday. We love you guys.